ER equals EPR, which is... So EPR was the spooky action at a distance. So we may have talked about that before. You know, in quantum mechanics, there's this entanglement thing where something can be separated by a million light years. But if you do something to it, it seems like this thing responds, right? Not in a way that you can transmit information, but it responds. So entanglement. There's a picture of that. So that's Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen, EPR, where they wrote a paper on this saying, we don't like this. It must be something wrong with quantum mechanics. We don't think there is now. This is the basis of quantum computers. So we build things that rely on this effect. ER is Einstein-Rosen, which is Einstein-Rosen bridge, which is wormhole. So they also published a paper about wormholes, Einstein and Rosen, in the 30s. And so the idea is that you could picture that somehow as being a kind of wormhole that connects the entangled particles. So that's how this entanglement works. It, another description of quantum entanglement is a wormhole kind of geometry. And th this, is, th this is part of the cutting edge of research into black holes, but also the structure of space and time and quantum entanglement and how quantum entanglement might produce space and time. And it's related to the way that quantum computers work. So it's become a really hot topic because people are trying to build quantum computers and program quantum computers. And these are the kind of problems you have to face about quantum entanglement and how you maintain it and what it means. And there was a paper recently, which is quite a controversial paper, but it, that I think was the Google quantum computer, that, that, which is one of the best ones. And it's not using it as a computer. It's using it just as these qubits, these little quantum systems that are kind of very stable, that are the basis of quantum computing. And it's using those qubits and setting them up in such a way that something that looks like a kind of a wormhole is created in the quantum computer. It's kind of a one-dimensional wormhole, and it's a bit kind of technical and everything. But it looks like it might be the first hint of how you build space Whoa. from qubits. And so it, it's and it's and so that paper was published... Oh, there it is. That's it. A holographic wormhole. It's, it's important to say that wormhole, it's what's called a hologram. It's not really in our universe. It's kind of a different thing. Because that's the last thing I'll say, because I've, <laughs> I've got to blow your mind because your mind looks right. It's so blown. Th th these theories, uh, the, the, the hologram thing is quite well established now. And it's coming from a thing that you may have talked about with other people on the show, the, the ADS-CFT conjecture, the uh, great physical Maldacena. So the idea is that you can have a quantum theory living on a boundary. So it, you could imagine, picture a sphere with a, with a quantum theory living on the surface. And that quantum, there's a completely equivalent description of whatever's going on, that, the physics, in the interior of the, of the sphere. So it's almost as if the interior of the space is a hologram of the theory that lives on the surface. And, and, and it's kind of... Not accepted, but one many physicists think our universe is like that. So, the, the, so what we're saying is that we're having this conversation now, and there's an equivalent description of this somehow in a theory that does not contain space and time. That's a completely equivalent description that lives on a, in in fewer dimensions on a surface somehow that's surrounding us, and it's really woolly and hand wavy because we don't fully know what. It means, but it but it would mean that we're holograms. So that this this is a hologram of 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 this other dual theory. That that's what that thing was, the, the holographic wormhole thing. So it's all very the beginnings of this work. But that's an example of how it could become an experimental science because quantum computers now exist, and they allow you to do those experiments to try to build. Filaments, it's almost like a filament of space, a holographic mm. filament of space that you're building from these qubits, which are just, and by the way, that word is a bit weird. It's just something like an electron. It's not, they're, they're more complicated, but an electron would be an example of one. So it's a physical thing that we have in the lab that is a quantum system, that's a quantum bit. So you build it in the different ways of building them, and that's what a quantum computer is. But it's amazing, isn't it, that we're beginning to use those things not for computing yet, because they're really hard to program. But we do, physicists have gone, this is great, because Google and Microsoft have spent billions of dollars building these things because they want to build these computers. But 
they're perfect laboratories for quantum mechanics. <laughs> so wow. you can do abstract research into quantum mechanics on them, which I find fascinating. That, that's actually more fascinating than using them to crack everybody's codes. Yeah, it's kind of like, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, you know, factoring large numbers. It's kind of boring. But building wormholes. Yes. Which is, and I, I caution, it's not, it, it's a complicated thing, but it, it looks like the beginnings of a laboratory to build structures like that that's so fascinating before you leave i have to ask you this because i I thought about this while you're talking you you might be the only person that could explain this to us that we were looking at this image of these quantum entangled photons and the image was in the shape of a yin yang we couldn't understand what we're seeing right (laughs) we couldn't understand if they did this on purpose to make it the shape of a yin yang and it's just the representation of these quantum entangled photons or if that is what quantum entangled photons actually look like in in a shape Uh, so it's visualized to entangled particles in real time it says making them appear as a stunning quantum yin yang symbol yeah i mean it's um i i hadn't seen that but it's uh it looks to me like it's another example of um trying to visualize entanglement looks fundamental let me put it that way so it, it does look as if this idea of entanglement which is the it is as I said, perhaps producing space and time itself. And, and, but also is the way that quantum computers work and the way that, you, we, we didn't talk about this, but the way that you can, one way of picturing what this does is allow you access to multiple universes. It's the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics.